Spotted something. Careful now, that's a trap. Careful. I spotted a trap. Can you feel it? The void. It's here. It's calling to me. doing, but it doesn't look good.
Once housed her. As you approach, she turns confused eyes on you. She stares uncomprehendingly at your outstretched hand, slowly raising a bewildered gaze to meet your eyes. She stares, and you feel yourself drawn into the mesmerizing source pools of her eyes. With a jolt, her life flashes before your eyes. You become her in her prime, battling the felled magister in a deserted clearing. Electricity crackles from your fingers as you glance upon the magister. The magister is part of something dark, something cruel, something that goes against the very fabric of your being. All bets are off. Merciless, you attack her with spell and blade. As her warm blood spurts to cover your face, you are sated. A satiety you would never speak of. A satiety that momentarily fills the emptiness within you. Wait, who are you? You can't. You can't remember. You are thrust out of the spirit's memories and back at your own sovereign mind. You see the spirit of the dwarven battle mage before you, eyes downcast now. body is fresh. Were they a sorcerer? The void is strong here. Even the stone is infected. The spirit tugs and tugs at the source collar around his neck, though it budges not an inch. We couldn't. I couldn't. Is it really our fault? The void woke. He gives you a look full of hope, 
then remembers the collar round his neck and slumps forward, letting his hands hang heavy by his sides. trapped in the fear of her final moments. No, no, please! Help! Someone! Help! She cringes at the name and turns to you, urgent. Mortis! No! Not Mortis! With growing horror, she turns her focus on something unseen, looming high above her. Looks like this is Lohar's place, or what's left of it. Could Mordus have survived this? The trembling of the Dwarven spirit tells you the halberd in his hands may not be enough to withstand his unseen enemy. He glances behind him, searching for an escape. He drops the halberd and bolts behind some nearby rocks. Divine, save me! I don't want to die, please! I don't want to die! I don't want to die! The spirit screams and screams as something unseen tears into him. There's a void woken on the bridge ahead. But where's it going? A frantic dwarf knocks an arrow to a phantom bow. He lets it fly at some towering invisible horror, visible only in his mind's eye. He reaches for another arrow. Keep firing, damn you! He has to have a weak spot. He has to. The ghostly dwarf ignores you, but the word Mordus forms soundlessly upon his lips. He drops his bow and yanks his sword from its sheath. Come on, you filth. Let's see what your insides look like. The spirit is blind to you. He grips his sword tightly. Creeping fear slowly fills his dead eyes. Her gaze falls on you, a glimmer of awareness. She raises her hand as a greeting, or as a warning. The spirit takes a deep breath and bellows silently. A distant cry echoes along the cavern. Run! What happened? The dwarf rocks on her haunches, gnawing at her own bloody knuckles. Her wet, fearful eyes flick to you. She lowers her fist just enough to hiss a warning. Away! Away! Too noisy! It'll come back! It'll take me too! She shrinks into the fetal position. Your efforts draw an expression of eerie calm. She stares up at you, wide-eyed. You'll see for yourself. They take us for food. They take us for food for their spawn. They'll take you too. Her stillness dissolves. Trembling, she curls herself into a whimpering ball and shuts you out. Be 
before he knows you're here. You think I stopped to get a name? They locked him up, but he got out, and they went crazy. They all went crazy. Run. If you know what's good for you, run. Well, we won't find them by gabbing here. The spirit stares at you, through you. When she opens her mouth to speak, her voice seems to drift to you from far away, as if half-dreamed. We keep the shipments here. That's what's meant for ships. It ends up in our carts, trundling away. Weapons. Weapons great and small. Weapons solid and floating through the breeze. It wafts on the wind. The black ring choked. Arcs will choke. They will all choke. Mordus? A dreamy smile spreads across her face. You don't look for Mordus. She comes back to herself for the first time and looks you in the eye. Mordus looks for you. Alchemist. The dwarven woman hums to herself as she works with total focus and concentration. Her ears twitch as you approach, but she does not turn to you. Yes. She turns to peer up at you, surprise and mistrust evident in her intelligent face. Looking closer, you recognize the device she works on. It is identical to the portal you were given to save the elves, right before the death fog annihilated them. And what business is it of yours, outsider? Safety? She laughs. A tinkling sound like glass smashing on a stone floor. <laughs> Maybe. If you consider the Hall of Echoes a place of safety, y you know this is a very specific kind of delivery device, right? Specifically for delivering death fog? Oh, yeah. Yeah, indeed. You remember when it was last used? Her eyes gleam with a truly unpleasant seal. Reflected in them, you see yourself standing there, white-faced, jaw slack with horror. Wiping out the Black Ring with a side order of elves in the last war. <laughs> Don't mess with the Divine Order! <laughs> Your mind races. Could this be true? Could it be you who brought death and destruction to the elves? All those lives. Who would set you up like that? Not Lucian? No. Lucian couldn't, wouldn't. We don't live in a civilized world. 
and we dwarves won't be living at all unless we do something. Queen Justinia understands that. Ah, oh, to be honest, I've, I've reached the end of my tether with what I can do here. So if you want to harass somebody, hang on. Panic. The original creator should arrive here any day now. Ready. 